Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video I'm going to show you how you can add names of a couple into the shape of a heart to create a lovely personalised design and then add a special date to the bottom for that extra personal touch. Now this would make a lovely design to cut out of vinyl to maybe decorate the front of a wedding guest book or cut it out of cardstock and use it to make a cake topper. Let's get started. First we need to get the heart outline so click into images and search for heart. I'm looking for one which is just the outline of a heart, so I'm going to have a little scroll through and see what I can find. I'm going to use this one as it's a nice thin outline and it's got lots of nice space inside the heart for me to add my names. So I click insert images and then make it nice and big so it's easier to work with. I want to add the first name to the top so click text and type out the name. You can change the font by clicking and dragging to select the text and then go into the font drop down on the top. You can choose from Cricut fonts or ones on your own computer or to filter to just ones on your computer click the systems link in the top right. I'm going to use a font called Fairy Tale, so I can just start typing and it will come up for me. Now when you use a script font in Design Space, it adds this big gap between all the letters, so we need to fix that. I'm going to make it bigger so it's easier to work with, and then with the text layer selected, press Ungroup at the top of the Layers panel. This puts each of the letters as its own layer, so now we can click and drag on them to move them so that they're touching. You want to make sure all your letters are touching, because um, that will help them stay joined together when you cut out the heart and they won't all start falling apart. When you're happy with how they're looking, select all the letters either by dragging a box on like I just did or click one of the layers in the layers panel and then press control on your keyboard and select the rest of them. Press group at the top and now you can move all those letters around as one and then roughly place it where you want it to go inside the heart. I'm not going to worry too much about the positioning just yet because that'll be easier to work out once we've got the other words. So I'm going to go into text again and type out an ampersand symbol and Design Space should remember the font that you used the first time so it's still showing me my fairy tale font. So I'm going to roughly put that into position next to my name. So I need to do my husband's name, which is James, so I can type that out. And again, I'm going to have to get all those letters touching each other. So I'm going to press ungroup and then move them all along. And then select them all and press group. And now I can move that word into the heart. So now it's just a case of resizing and rotating your words and your names until you're happy with where they're positioned. You want to try and make sure there's lots of parts where it's touching each other. So for example on my name I've got these two points of the S touching the outer part of the heart and also the top of the H is touching as well. On the ampersand I've got it touching the edge of the heart so it's not going to fall apart when we cut it out. And also it's touching the H on the word Sarah so that it's all nice and joined together. I'm just going to play about with the sizing and positioning of all the words until I'm happy with how they are showing. Okay, so I'm happy with how this is looking now. And you'll see I've got all of my words are connecting to the other words in at least one place. So if you're cutting this out from cardstock then it's not all going to fall apart once you cut it out because everything will be nicely joined together. I've got some space down the bottom of my heart and I think it would be nice to add the wedding date in there. So I'm going to go into shapes and choose a square. And just move that to one side but before I do anything with that I'm going to scroll down and find my heart layer and right click and press duplicate. I'm going to try and line that up exactly on the top of the other one but just to make it exact you can choose one of them and then find the other one, press control on your keyboard and choose the other heart layer and then go into align and center. 
that might shift the position about a little bit so you may need to rearrange your words after you do that to get them to fit properly. So with this rectangle I'm just going to make it a nice bright colour so it's easier to see and then click the padlock icon so that I can change it into a rectangle rather than a square. I'm going to move the layer to the top so that I can um, position it a bit easier and then just drag it so that it's going to go all the way along the heart. I'm going to choose the rectangle and then the second heart outline, so the one that I duplicated, and then press slice down the bottom of the layers panel. Go ahead and start um, looking at the slice results and deleting the ones you don't need. So I don't need the um, big heart cut out, I can delete that one. I don't need these little black bits here and I don't need the top one. What I'm looking for is the cut out rectangle. And what that will have done is it will have sliced out the edges of the heart from the rectangle. So if I go into contour down the bottom of the layers panel, I can click those two outside bits to hide them. And now I'm just left with this shape here. Make it the same color as your outline and then select that layer. And with control on your keyboard, choose the main heart outline, so your original heart, and then press weld. And that's going to mush these two together into one layer. So you can see if I hide it, how that's now joined together. So now we can cut the wedding day out of that rectangle at the bottom. Go into text again and type out your date. This isn't our actual wedding date, I'm just putting in a random one. Um, and change the font color to something different so that you can put it on top of the rectangle and see how it's going to look. Now this fairy tale font isn't very good, it's because it's got thin bits on the swirls, it isn't going to look right. So I'm going to change the font. If you're going to be cutting this design out of cardstock, for example to make a cake topper or something like that, then when you do this bit, slicing out of the rectangle, you need to make sure you choose a stencil font. And that will stop the middle of the O's and 8's and 6's from falling apart when you cut it. If you're cutting it out from vinyl, um, then it doesn't matter what font you use because the vinyl will make sure all your middles of your numbers stay where they should be. But if it's cardstock, then a stencil font is what you need. And you can search for them by typing stencil into um, the search box when you change the font. And then it will show you lots of stencil options. So a stencil font is one where... Um, the letters aren't all completely joined, so if you see here on the zeros, it's got that little gap in between it. And that means when I cut this out of cardstock, the middle will stay joined on, it's not going to fall apart. So I'm going to just change the colour of that and position it where I want it to go on top of the, um, the heart. And when I'm happy with how it's looking, I'm going to choose the layer of the words and then press control on my keyboard and choose the heart outline with the rectangle welded on and go down to the bottom and press slice. So I can delete those first two slice results. And now I'm left with the heart, which has got the numbers cut out of the bottom. So that just adds a nice little extra finishing touch to your heart. But there it is nearly ready to cut. If we were to cut this now, I'm just going to change the colour. Now that I've changed the colour, you can see the problem. This isn't one combined shape at the moment. Although I've positioned it next to each other on the screen, it's all still completely different. So if I was to click make it now, it's going to put everything in random places and not cut it out where I want it to go. So there's one more step I need to do, and that is to weld everything together. Now you might be thinking, why don't I use the attach tool? And I could do that, but if I just select everything and show you, if I was to press attach and then click make it, yes, it's now all still in position, but you can see where all the letters join um, on the words and where it joins the outline of the heart. You've still got cut lines in between them. So when you cut this out, it's all just going to fall apart and be lots of different 
um, elements. It's not going to be one combined shape. So that's why in this case, attach doesn't work. So I'm just going to undo that attachment. And what we want to do instead is we want to weld everything. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this first. Because once you weld, you can't unweld unless you do it straight away. So if I was to weld this and then go away, close design space and come back and then realize I'd spelt something wrong and needed to change it or I'd got the wedding date wrong, I wouldn't be able to change it. I'd have to start again because I would have welded everything. So a trick to um, make it so that you can change things in the future is to select all of your layers and press group so that they're all in one group together and then right click and duplicate so you've got a copy. Click the eye icon in the layers panel next to the one you've just duplicated and that will hide it. So now we have a copy of it with all the different layers still in there. So if you need to make a change in the future, you can just turn that on by clicking the eye and make your change in there and reweld it. But for now, I'm going to click on the one that's showing and then down the bottom, press weld. And now all those cut lines between the words and the outline are gone, which means it's all going to cut out as one continuous shape all the way along. Now I have just noticed a little problem with this, and that is it's filled in the hole in the middle of the J. Sometimes when you weld it does do that, and there is a way to fix it. So I'm going to undo my weld. Okay, so now I've got all my layers again, and you can see the J has that little gap in it, which I want to keep. So I've got everything grouped, and I'm going to zoom out, and then just make this really, really big. And now I'm going to press weld again, and it might take a little bit of time because we've made it so big, but this time it hasn't filled in the gaps. And that's just a little design space quirk um, where sometimes it fills things in, but by making it really big and trying it again, usually that fixes it. So now I can resize it back down to eight inches, which is how big I want to cut it, and zoom back in. And now there we have it, the finished heart design, all ready to cut out without any of those little bits filled in accidentally. So I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for lots more design space and Cricut crafting tutorials. Thank you for watching.